You know, most Americans who watched this episode uh, or segment of Night Gallery and didn't get it, didn't really understand what it was all about because you're going to be uh, of UK extraction or Commonwealth uh, extraction to really understand the British style of intellectual or common man's horror. Now, on Certain Shadows on the Wall, which was directed by the great Jeff Corey, Rod, Gow, uh, Rod Serling brings a certain panache to the genre by incorporating, uh, of all people, Charles Dickens' work within the teleplay. Now, in this uh, very quick and very intellectual segment, uh, Emma Brigham, played by the great Agnes Moorhead, lies in bed on her deathbed. <coughs> her physician brother, Stephen, played by the great Lewis Hayward, minister to her after giving up his practice, including nightly readings to her of the works of her favorite author, Charles Dickens. Her spinster sisters, Dower Pragmatic Anne, played by Grayson, Grayson Hall of uh, uh, Night of the Iguana and Dark Shadows uh, fame, uh, cult actress that ever were, and Sweet Rebecca played by, again, Academy Award nominee Rachel Roberts. They also live with Emma. Now, uh, the once again, the stairwell in this house looks quite familiar, and uh, this was a repeat of what was used in a house in the cemetery of previous episodes. Now, Stephen shares Emma's prognosis with Anne and Rebecca, telling them Emma has but days to live. They are eventually startled by a crashing sound and Emma has died, knocking over a table while reading Dickens' Bleak House in her final moments. Soon thereafter, that well-used staircase becomes the focal point, once again as an image of what looks to be the late Emma sitting up in bed appears on the wall of the staircase. It is a silhouette, seemingly a shadow, yet on closer inspection it is not a shadow, but an image directly on the wall, a certain shadow. Stephen, initially in denial, insists it is a stain or discoloration. After the siblings return from Emma's funeral, the image is still on the wall, which there is a plot hole like crazy in this, and, you know, it's its gothic aura. Couldn't you just shut the lights off and see if it's still there? Now, the funeral home phones asking for the cause of death, and Stephen says it was a dyspezia, and becoming agitated and defensive, says that there is no need for them to verify. Stephen becomes nearly obsessed with finding an explanation for Emma's image on the wall, and when Rebecca finds a bottle of heavy sedative, sedative she apparently makes a connection that we would not expect her to make, given her seemingly sunny outlook on people in life, meaning she's kind of ditzy. As Stephen continues cataloging the many possessions that in Emma's home, possessions which is now imagining enriching the three surviving siblings, Rebecca convinces him he needs some rest, and to that, he has, uh, Andy has prepared him a cup of hot tea. Drink your tea, you'll feel ever so much better, she cools. And as you know, never accept drinks from a relative, especially tea, in horror uh, situations. Now, when we, when we see next see uh, the staircase wall, Rebecca eventually confides to Anne that she ground up some of the sedatives and put them in Stephen's tea. Anne seems slightly surprised but not alarmed. It is a lethal dose. His death is ruled accidental and he's buried alongside Emma. And now on the staircase we see Emma's shadow has been joined by one of Stephen reading to her. Now one would surmise forevermore. Now, uh, for a lot of people, and I'm quoting for David Jules WordPress in this article again, uh, thank you, David, uh, do great work. Uh, I enjoyed the episode for what it was worth. It's basically a British look at intellectual horror. It's not uh, something that we, we know uh, the, the trope where you have the very pushy uncle or brother or whatever, and he comes to a bad end. But in this case, uh, people would read by candlelight with these old books, either by, uh, what do you call, filament light or light from a kerosene lamp or whatever. And as kids, we would play with certain shadows on the wall. And uh, in later episodes of Night Gallery, it showed that to good effect, like shadows have substance, as we say. But in this case, uh, we're not really sure if the person has been punished forever to be side by side with his sister, or the fact was that's where he's meant to be. It's left to interpretation. But again, the, uh, Rachel Roberts, Grayson Hall, uh, Angus Moorhead, uh, all together in one episode. For, for If you're a fan of British 
and North American movies. Angus Moorhead, probably one of the most underrated actors of her uh, generation, and her appearance in The Invaders and Night uh, Twilight Zone. She was one of the links with, again, Twilight Zone and Night Gallery. There were numerous links from both, including, you know, Mickey Rooney and various other actors. Now, for me, it's about a two and a half stars out of four. I wouldn't expect a, a typical American you know, a grisly horror person would get it. But the boys of oh boys of oh boys of oh boys, atmospheric direction. Jeff Corey, what an amazing talent. You know, if Jeff Corey would have done more big screen movies, he would have won an Oscar. But he, he liked the medium of television so much. And these episodes between 17 and, you know, 30 minutes were perfect. They're on his, in his wheelhouse all the time. Now, what I want to warn people about uh, this episode, if you're going to... Uh, watch it for the first time the reason why I don't really give away of an episode you can see him coming from miles away but just because you know what the ending is everybody knows the ending of Beatles songs and we still enjoy it but if you're a fan of Rachel Roberts a fan of Angus Moorhead if you're a fan of Dark Shadows to see again Grayson Hall who wasn't the greatest actress in the world but when she put herself into a part she put 100% and uh, you know Night of the Iguana as well you don't get nominated for an Oscar and be on the, uh, the most important soap opera of the late 70s, 60s, early 70s, all those years, unless you're talented. And Rachel Roberts has been forgotten as a great talent, and she shouldn't shouldn't been. Uh, this Sporting Life and other movies. Go check her out. So that's the latest on our Night Gallery podcast. We're doing a few over the next few days in celebration of Halloween. Check out uh, to this uh uh, my previous Night Gallery podcast on my channel. I think in total I've gotten nearly 75,000 hits on the different ones I've done over the years. And uh, I thank you for support. The highest ones, of course, were the Rod, uh, the Rod and McDowell, uh, you know, the, the Graveyard episode. Still ranks as probably one of the most freakiest thing to watch. What people should do and try to do is encourage channels and estates to show episodes of Night Gallery for two weeks before Halloween, <coughs> starting on the 17th or 18th, leading up to the 31st, you know, a two-hour block, and basically get any surviving actors or historians of Night Gallery, including a great friend of the channel, uh, Scott Skelton, who has written a couple of books on Night Gallery, to either host or break down some of the episodes and do a rolling uh, commentary, because, you know, as individual episodes or segments, uh, when they really, really hit they were great, and uh, even the two and a half stars ones like this one, it, it really, really, it's unlike anything you've ever seen on television, because it draws you in, it's sort of like a very good stage play, and that's what Night Gallery is pretty well all about, very atmospheric, thanks for listening, and don't forget, be careful this Halloween, or the boogeyman will come and get you, say like Patrick Stewart, he did say that to me once, have a good day, bye.